I, I wanted to remind you, in about 15 minutes, we're going to be joined in the studio by a guest. His name is Jim Woolley. Uh, Jim has been uh, in the studio with us before. He talks about investing. Uh, hopefully, he can calm some nerves today. <laughs> Actually, there's a great piece in the op-ed pages of the Wall Street Journal this morning pointing out that all of this, uh, what you might call a, it's not panic, come up with a euphemism for it, something a little nicer, but what's going on with the big sell-off on Wall Street really shouldn't be happening because the things people are concerned about really don't impact the United States. And, and perhaps we can get some thoughts on that and, and people can be more reasonable after Jim's appearance this morning on the program, and he's got a couple of things he wants to share with us anyway that he's, he's bringing along, and we planned this long before this, uh, th this, this situation developed anyway. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com, and I'd like to thank you very, very much for joining us this morning. And I, I wanted to mention something that I happened to see Sent my way by a friend. She lives in Texas, of all places. But you want to talk about monitoring what takes place in the Pacific Northwest and the mountain region. She does an excellent job. In fact, in a sense, uh, just a tap of the hat today to Kathy. She's really uh, my show prep person. Uh, if I, I don't have a producer per se, but if anybody is, uh, is, is, is in that role somewhat, that's, that's her. She's a native of Montana, so she keeps close tabs on what happens in this part of the country and she sent me a couple of links this morning, and I just was like, wow. We've been having a discussion about this refugee resettlement program on this radio station going back to April of last year. So here we are nine months into this, and the debate goes on. And, and refugees are coming here. Nothing has stopped, even though we have people in government who are saying, we'll back off for now. But the refugees that we agreed to take, and I know, who who do, who, who do we mean by we? Well, the refugees that the program decided to take, the ones who are already scheduled will come here, and they're already on their way somewhere in the community. And there's going to be a few more trickling in who are part of that 300. But we have people in government now who are saying, we can't do this. We have to stand back for a while and reconsider what we're doing for security reasons. That followed what happened in France, and it followed what happened in San Bernardino, California. I have never been to Sandpoint, Idaho. I know that uh, that you've got some people who live there who are, well, you'd call them well-papered up, right? Uh, you've got people who are involved in entertainment. You've got people who are involved in, in politics. Uh, ben Stein, uh, conservative, but he's been involved in both politics and entertainment for many, many years. Ben Stein has a home in Sandpoint. But I would assume that it is one of the more liberal communities in all of Idaho. Take a listen to this. This is from Channel 6 KHQ-TV. And there was a public meeting in Sandpoint on bringing refugees into that community. Now, I, and I'm saying it is a more liberal place than Twin Falls will ever be. And look what they did. Take a listen to this story from, uh, from Channel 6. Right now, the debate to let Syrian refugees come to Sandpoint, Idaho, is over. After weeks of heated arguments, the mayor has decided not to oppose Governor Butch Otter's decision. Patrick Erickson was there tonight when he announced the controversial move. Patrick? Just two weeks after this controversial resolution was first introduced to the city council, tonight the Sandpoint mayor shocking everyone. As a sponsor of this resolution, I move to withdraw from consideration. Tabling it at their last meeting Wednesday night, the city council was once again ready to take up the newly elected mayor's controversial anti-discrimination resolution involving Syrian refugees. At their last meeting for nearly two hours, the council listened to folks who were both for and against it. However, Wednesday's meeting took less than half an hour and ended when Mayor Shelby Rongstad decided to pull his support. When I saw that there were two council members who were um, likely to not vote for it, I thought it would it would show uh, more solidarity and make a, a I think a more powerful statement to simply withdraw the resolution. After the meeting, those who were here protesting this issue from both sides agreed this was the right decision. No matter which side the council decided on tonight, there was going to be further division and further anger, and withdrawing is was a pretty sound place to go, I believe. Yeah, I was a little surprised, but. I think it was a wise decision. And Mayor Shelby Rongstad says at this point he really doesn't know whether or not he will be bringing up this issue again. He says really it depends on how it will affect his community.
That is from KHQ-TV. So now you have a Sandpoint, Idaho, as I pointed out, maybe not the most liberal community in the state, but among the most liberal communities in the state saying no to bringing Syrian refugees into their community. If it can happen there, perhaps we can see people who will start to stand up here, even elected representatives and officials, who will say, yeah, this is not a good idea. And the comment was that the mayor decided to follow the advice of Governor Butch Otter. Now, months ago, Governor Otter told me on this program, long before the attacks in Paris and long before San Bernardino, that we needed to put a moratorium on it, we needed to put a hold on it, And all of your local political class who supposedly take their cues from our leading state Republican ignored him. And then, a couple of months down the road, you have these horrid attacks and people say, Oh, I just noticed a change in the wind direction. You know, gosh, this is probably a bad idea right now. And I've thought so all along. You just misunderstood me. That's what we've been dealing with here in this community. Well, folks... There is pressure on those local politicians. Why is there pressure on them? Let me share this with you. Also from my friend Kathy, originally from Montana, who was, who was keeping close tabs on events in the Northwest. World Net Daily, American yogurt billionaire, hire more Muslim refugees. The writer says Chobani has been held as the fastest growing brand of Greek-style yogurt and recently opened the world's largest yogurt plant in Idaho. Ever wonder why the federal government would be sending hundreds of foreign refugees to a relatively small town in Idaho? Wonder no more. The writer says they're sent there, many of them, to work in the world's largest yogurt factory. And since we're talking about that, Chobani's founder is at Davos. Davos, Switzerland is where the big money guys get together. It's an American version of Bohemian Grove. In fact, a little bit like the Bilderberger Group. And they're all meeting, deciding to how, to, how to divide up the world economic pie this week. And he was speaking to, of all people, CBS News. Here's a couple of minutes of his conversation. Uh, This is our founder of Chobani Yogurt. He is speaking with CBS about something he calls the Tent Foundation. My initial impression was he was talking about providing relief for these refugees, giving them safe haven within the Middle East. But apparently not. Tent Foundation is my personal foundation. I founded um, last year uh, after I get involved with this humanitarian crisis with refugees and then I spent quite a bit of time trying to understand what is happening it's not only Syria and it's not only you know the Kurds and Arabs in that area it's all over the world we have 60 million refugees or displaced people all around the globe I went to the uh, you know field went to refugee camps went to last coast the island talked to refugees talked to the organization that were in there but I realized that even though the there's so many passionate people are working in the field. But we are doing this the way that we, used, we did in 1940s. It's very, very old. So I thought there is a different way that we can bring into this issue, and I said we can hack it. The only way we do it, we do it with an entrepreneurial spirit, and then we do it with the business mindset coming into these humanitarian issues. So I reach out to you know other companies, and, and that they are already doing some work like you know, IKEA Foundation has done an amazing job, you know, coming up with what's the next way of replacing the tents in the camps or LinkedIn or Airbnbs. So we have four or five companies already pledged to join uh, into this effort to bring the expertise of the businesses and their, you know, uh, presence and align with the organizations that are already in the field to bring this to the next level and innovate it. And the biggest thing that keeps me going is while you're doing business, first help the community you're in, and and then expand, you know, around the globe and see how can you make the world a better place. That's that's my main reasons of keeps me going every single day to go back to work and make the world a better place. What a lot of maneuver. He's talking about a key. A UPS is also United Parcel Service, also on board with this. He's got five other companies now that say that they will begin hiring these people. Five. In other words, let's open the floodgates and we're going to use our position within our communities to leverage your local politicians, just like the donor class does with the Republican Party, to forget what the majority wants and to go with what I want. And oh, by the way, I'll make massive profits, but gosh, ain't I good-hearted. 
We have some callers looking to join us this morning. 736-0300-816-27 right now. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. I don't know if this is a, a, an active line. No, that is not. We'll try line two then. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on KLIX. Well, which way the wind is blowing for you today? Obviously, Michigan has been going on for quite some time, and oh, no, no, no. It let the white Hitler in Michigan, the white terrorists, keep poisoning the kids with lead poisoning Man, over there. you no, are all no, over the place. You know, if you could just speak English, I don't even think you could be in, you could be any more incoherent, but if you could just speak English, maybe we might be able to understand you, but clearly... You can't even you can't even put together some thoughts in your own native tongue for crying out loud. By the way, it is a two hour show. I will address Michigan a bit later and how it was the Liberal Democrats who poisoned the people of uh, Flint, Michigan. But there you go. You got a guy out there who listens every morning and he grinds his teeth and he he can't put two sentences together likely in Spanish and he sure as hell can in English. Seven three six zero three hundred. 736-0300. Also, my email address, bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. Bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. While these business people are so interested in bringing the, uh, the war here, uh, terrorism to our own shores, I came across this too as well today. The Christian Post. Russian Orthodox leader blames godless secular civilization for rise of ISIS. Patriarch Kirill. He is the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, has claimed that one of the reasons so many Muslims are, lo- are joining the Islamic State is because they want to escape the world's godless embrace of homosexuality. <laughs> this guy just lays it out on the line, doesn't he? Either that or they want to get out of Flint, Michigan. The Independent translated Kirill's comments, noting that they were made earlier in January and posted on the church's official website. In an interview, he says, ISIS is creating a civilization that is new by comparison to the established one that is godless, secular and even radical in secularism. He went on to say we can have parades for the sexual minorities that is supported, but a million French Christian protesters defending family values are broken up by police, he added, referring to LGBT issue marches in Europe. So there's a fellow who is keeping tabs on all of this, and there's a photograph of him here next to the Russian president. Uh, You may know that that fellow Vladimir Putin is a man who does not tolerate Islamic terrorism. And in fact, has warned publicly about it often. And after the attack on the Beslan school, and uh, where you had a couple of hundred children, small children killed by these thugs, by these these, these subhuman thugs, he then went out and decided, you know what, we'll even the score. He not only killed all of the terrorists, he killed their families. He killed their extended families. You haven't heard a peep out of those people since. That's how you deal with this terroristic filth. You shoot them. You know what? A dead terrorist is quite useless, and they stink up a place awful. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, News 1310.com. Jim Woolley joining us in just a couple of minutes. Going to talk a little bit about the investment game with him. That's on the way on News Radio 1310, KLIX.